Hi, I'm Catherine Gladwin and I'm the author of the number one bestseller, How to Be a Virtual Assistant. In this video, I'm going to share my tips and advice to help you nail those potential client calls. So there are a couple of things you absolutely need to do before you have the call. Firstly, you need to ask the client via email, if that's their first line of contact, or maybe it was a DM on social media, you need to ask them what support they're looking for, because it might be something that you don't do or something that you don't enjoy. And you don't want to get on that call and find out five minutes into it that it's not something that you want to do. Um, that can be very awkward for you. It can be a waste of your time and it's also a waste of the client's time as well. So first of all, find out exactly what they need help with. It doesn't need to be detailed. It doesn't need to be like a full job description. They may just come to you and say, well, I do my bookkeeping currently and I'm fed up with it. I need somebody else to do it for me. We sometimes assume that if people have got in touch with us, they've seen everything about us. They've looked at our website. They know exactly what we do. And it, it's sometimes that's not the case. In fact, quite often that's not the case. They've just seen virtual assistant and they assume that you do what they want you to do and they get in touch. So first of all, find out what it is they need help with. Finding out what they need help with also helps to get rid of time wasters. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there that just want to chat. They want to network, they want you to join their networking community, or they want to sell you something like Arbon or some sales course that you've got absolutely no need for. So asking them what they need support with from a virtual assistant is a great way to get rid of those people because sometimes they'll come back and go, I just thought you might fancy a virtual coffee. No thanks. Another thing a lot of people that get in touch don't realise is the hourly rate. So they've got an assumption. They still think that, you know, it's like an employee. They can pay you nine, ten pound an hour for for doing whatever they want. And they may not realise what your hourly rate is. So make sure up front via that email or the DM or however you're in contact with them, that you guide them to your website and the rates page or you mention it in the email. You could say something like looking forward to speaking to you on Wednesday at 10 o'clock just to remind you these are the services I provide and the hourly rate is £35 an hour, something like that. Just slip it in like that or say to them, please take a look at my website before we have the call in case you've got any questions. And then they can see quite clearly what your hourly rate is. And then you don't get that awkward. Ah, it's a little bit too much for me because nobody wants to say that. And again, you'd have your time wasted. This bit's really important to do before the call as well, is to do your research and not just a little bit on their website, not just the about page on there, but really get to know what it is they do. The about page may also tell you what their journey to business owners has been as well. So you might you might find out something personal about them that you could relate to or you could mention. Um, perhaps they um, let's think of something ridiculous. Perhaps they've got 11 children. You know, that is a real talking point. So you could mention that on the call, you know. Don't say something like, have you not got a telly? Now, another thing to do before you start the call, and this is really important, is to have a wee. Because there's, you know, even though you, you might be on the call, hoping to only be on the call for 10 minutes, you may have a real rapport or they might be a real chatter or something like that. Chatter, is that a word? Talker? Talker, that'd be a better one. Um, so make sure you've had a wee because there's nothing worse than like, oh God, yeah, because I don't know about you, but if I need a wee, I can't listen at the same time. Multitasking is not my thing. So make sure you have a wee and you stop work 10 minutes before the call. This really works for me because otherwise my head is still in what I was doing before or I'm thinking about going back to that thing. So I step away from all technology 10 minutes before, make sure I've got my headphones out because I want to use my headphones and make sure my laptop's charged so that I don't have to rummage around and plug it back in. And I also make sure that notifications are turned off so that my email doesn't ping while I'm on a Zoom call or my phone doesn't ping or ring while I'm on the Zoom call because there's nothing worse than talking to somebody because I've had it done to me, talking to somebody and their phone goes and you see them go and you've lost their concentration for a few seconds. You really have. And then they're thinking about all oh, that. Uh, uh, and it's, it's, I don't think it's professional. Your, your head needs to be totally in the game talking to them and focused on them so make sure that all notifications and bing bongs are turned off and have that way now this next bit is easier said than done but be confident y you are the 
business owners equal. You are not below them. You are not an employee. You will be working with them, not for them, with them to guide them and help them in their business. You're you're on the same level as them. So don't think that there's a hierarchy just because you'll be doing admin for them. Admin is not basic. Admin is not menial tasks. It's it's important and it keeps a business going. So you are a huge asset to them. You're bringing a huge, huge amount to their business. So get over any mindset that might be telling you, God, you know, they're, they're going to think I'm awful. They're going to think this. They're going to think that. They're not going to think anything. They're, all they're thinking is, can you help me? And that's either a yes or a no. So you are completely their equal. So try and remember that. Put that on a bit of paper. Put it in front of you. If you're into mantras, manifestation, anything like that, keep saying it to yourself because they're lucky to have you just as you are lucky to have them as a client. Now, you may or may not know that I work with associates. So I've got a team of associates behind me that work with my clients. And I've had feedback from potential clients that have had calls with my associates. And some of the feedback sometimes has been not so good. So I'm going to share with you a couple of things not to do on the call so that there's not a bad impression. Piles of washing behind you. Now, it is your business. It's your life. You do exactly what you want. But it doesn't look great when there's a load of ironing stuck up behind you. They've also, I've also had feedback that somebody had a treadmill with clothes all hanging on it, just thrown over it, hanging over it and what have you. And it really doesn't look great. Now, if I was to move my camera over there, see, I'm in my bedroom at the moment recording this because it's the best light. But if I was to move my camera over there, you'll see an empty Coke bottle. You'll see a hair clip. You'll see an unmade bed. What else have I got over there? An antibiotic spray for my ear. You don't need to see that. What you see here is just, it's not distracting. Another thing is not to be late for the call. I mean, sometimes we can't help it. Technology lets us down the laptop's not working or something like that, but it, it's, it, there isn't really much of an excuse to, to, to be late. So like I said, stop 10 minutes beforehand and maybe log on to the call a couple of minutes before it's due to start so that you're there ready. Make sure you've tested everything beforehand. Like I said, plug in the laptop, turn off your notifications, make sure everything's working. Make sure your laptop's not gonna suddenly do an, a 45 minute update just before the call and and don't be late. It, it Time is money for business owners and it's incredibly rude when people keep you waiting. I only allow people to keep me waiting for five minutes and then I cut off the call. And if they want another call, they're going to have to pay for it because I'm not going through that situation again. So it, it's really important that you're, you're good with your time management. So that's the negatives out of the way. No knickers behind you, basically. So when you have the call with a potential client, you are being, you're being invited to work with them because you're going to make a change to their business. You're going to take things off of their to-do list. It's going to free up their time. It's going to just oh, release their shoulders and enable them to bring more money into their business because they're not doing the tasks that, that aren't bringing in the clients. You're going to be doing that. So you need to have an air of managerial authoritativeness around you, if you like. I can't think of the word right now. Um, so you need to be guiding the call. So in advance of the call, you ask them what help they need is, you know, with with specific tasks. And so I'd like you to guide the call. So we can start it with, hi, Tom, it's great to meet you or it's great to speak to you. So you want help with your inbox management. Brilliant. This is what I've been doing for the last 10 years in my role as an EA. So it will be great to work with you and, and just take that stress away from you. A few things that I could do straight away would be to unsubscribe you from things that are just clogging up your inbox. It's so easy to just delete them. But if we unsubscribe them, they won't even take up your time. That's something I could do for you. Um, I'm just thinking of other things that we could do together. So I could create folders for your emails so that they're in a special place. And I could also reply to things as I get to know your client's needs so that you don't even have to go into your inbox. I could put anything that needs your attention into something like Asana. How does that sound? Straight away, you've gone in, you've, had an, you've given them an idea, you've taken control and they can just think, wow, did she just say I don't even have to go into my inbox? That's amazing. Now, what you could do, inbox management is just an example Think of any of your services and think of the change that you make for your clients. And then that's something that you can talk about when you have these potential client calls. 
maybe write those down now ready for when you do have those calls so that you've got everything there and there's no panic on the day. Now, when you're first starting out as a virtual assistant, it's common, it will happen, you will underprice yourself. You'll give somebody a price for something, you'll start doing it and you'll think, oh my God, it's going to take me like four times as long. I did it at the beginning. I quoted somebody, I might say this differently another time, I think I quoted them eight hours to do some copy typing and it took me about 18 hours, even more than that, I think. I just, I cannot remember how long it took, but it was such a long time. But I had to suck it up and I thought, well, I'll just learn from this. So what I do, how I learned from that and what I do now is I say to people, okay, that's great. So you need X, Y and Z done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work out how much that's going to cost. And I will send you an email as soon as this calls over with the price so that you've got it in writing. If I don't know the price, if I know the price just like that, I can say it, but I will never put myself in a position anymore that I'm thinking, oh, I need to think of a price. I need to think of a price. It's absolutely fine to send them an email after the call with the price. In fact, that's probably better because they've got it in writing and they can refer to it. And then there's like there's no confusion when it comes to the invoice. And they say, oh, I thought you said 30 quid, not 300 quid. Hmm. So you've had the call, it all went quite well, you feel physically sick, you need another wee, what do you do then? So what I do, if you if you hadn't given a price in the call, then follow it up ASAP in an email. If you did give a price on the call, again, there's no harm in following it up by email just to confirm it in writing. I think that's a great idea. But either way, do send them an email as soon as possible. Thank them for their time because that that just works really well. When people send me an email after a call thanking me for their time, I think, well, yeah, you do, you appreciated me, so that's good. So thank them for their time, maybe give an outline of the support that they've discussed needing so that it's clarified and there's no like, oh, well, no, I don't remember saying that, got it in writing. Give them the price and say, I'm here if you want to get started, have a great week, something like that. If you don't hear anything, it doesn't mean that you're the worst VA ever. Nobody's ever going to want to work with you. You need to go back to employment or need to give up the dream and just hide under your duvet for an hour. They're busy. Had to stop. Merc bike went by. They're busy. So just give them a week before you chase them again and send an email after a week and say, hi, Tom, I'm going to use Tom as an example again. Hi, Tom, just wondered if you'd had a chance to look at my last email. You know where I am if you want to get started. It will be fantastic to have the opportunity to work with you. And then you can just leave it. If they don't get back to you, then you can perhaps just leave it. Please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Press the bell so that you get notified when I upload a new video because more will be coming out. I was going to say every day, but it won't be. It'll be regularly.